You were taught to expect the unexpected, Kurade. Uh, I, I think I'm in the wrong room. I was, I was just looking for the vending machine. You know the price of failure. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you all once again. But if you're new, I want to welcome you just the same because this is the place that you've been looking for, where we review each and every episode of a popular show from the 80s and 90s that we grew up on and look at them now from the perspective of an adult. And right now we're working our way through a series talking about each and every episode of Batman Beyond. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, then please hit subscribe. And while you're down there, why don't you hit the like button? Because today we're talking about A Touch of Curare which originally aired on May 15th, 1999. Boy, I hope I said that right. Curare. She's as lethal as her name. Well, this episode brings back the League of Assassins, which is just which has always just been an interesting premise in the Batman DC world. And and I love kind of the future elements of this, that this league that's been around a long time before any of us were, and long before the, the, the Batman was and things like that, that is now still exists and is still out there and is still active. And they they add more elements to them and, and develop that league out a bit and and just bring some some interesting elements. And we also see Barbara Gordon taking more of a um, a, a primary function in this story. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60-second blight bomb rundown of the episode. I'm going to give you a complete synopsis of the episode just to get you caught up on what we're talking about in 60 seconds or less before that bomb goes off. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. More often I don't. We see Barbara and her husband, the DA, walking through a park, and then this mummy, blue, mummy-looking woman comes in and, and tries to attack him, and uh, Batman swoops in, saves the day, and then we're back in the Batcave. Ba Batman is talking to Bruce and goes, who is this person? Oh, it's a member of the League of Assassins, but Barbara's not the target. And Barbara walks in the Batcave, and she goes, that's right, it's my husband. He's the DA. He's going to testify against this arms dealer, and the League of Assassins put a, a hit out on him, and Terry's going, wait, what, what, what's going on? Oh, oh, you're Batgirl. And then, so we, then we have the DA under uh, protection, and the mummy comes in, uh, to attack, Hirari to, comes in an attack, and Batman and Barbara kind of fight, and, but but then it ends up getting away, and Barbara is it blames Batman and says, "Hey, you got to stay out of this. Don't do this." And then we have a train transporting uh, the DA to the uh, 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 place uh, to testify, and then Batman swoops in, saves the day, and then um, but then we find out that the League of Assassins now put a head out on Karari to to, to uh, kill her. I got real nervous there at the end. Probably missed a few details, but still counts. That's reassuring. This episode starts out building out Barbara's character, and we see that she's now married. Is not only married to her work, because she's trying to talk with this, but is married to the new DA, Sam Young. Um, well, I don't know how new he is. He's new to us, but we all know what happens to DAs, don't we? Ancient history, McGinnis. But I like that, and I like the similarities that we're seeing between Barbara Gordon and her father, Jim Gordon, James Gordon, Commissioner Jim Gordon, Jim, Jim, James, uh, whatever you want to call him. I like to see those simul similar similarities. I like to see those similarities between them that, that he was also very dedicated to his work and that was his life and that's what he did. And and she's now mirroring that. She's out on this nice romantic stroll with her husband enjoying the, the night in the park. And yet uh, she's still wanting to talk about business. Do you know how hard my men worked? Uh, uh, uh. But it's also, it's a great way of, of sneaking in the introduction of who he is and why this assassin's coming to get them. Sam, get back! And conveniently, as, as I guess the story should go, Batman happened to be flying overhead and was able to, to battle this, uh, this assassin. I gotta get me one of those swords. And I know Batman's new to this, but... You're going to wrap somebody up with a sword that could just get cut. Nice try. Gotcha. 
kind of give a little bit of history to who Karari is, and obviously Bruce knew about her, but um, and 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 it's more just tied into the League of Assassins. And obviously, she's she's apparently not very good because she uh, uh, brings up this element that I don't think we've talked about with the League of Assassins. That do you know what happens when a member of the Society of Assassins fails to kill his target? They are then hunted and and killed by other assassins, which is is kind of a neat element to this society. And Curare is the best they have. So I, I think it would have been neat to, to, to learn more about who she is and because it just felt like they kind of gave her a gimmick that, oh, she's a blue mummy person. I don't know. And, and, and they even said like, oh, nobody even knows what her real name is anymore. I would have liked to see them develop a little bit more out about her, but I really think it was just a function of the of the story being about, oh, the League of Assassins is after Barbara's husband and that could potentially pull her back into crime fighting, but she's doing things by the book and less about this individual assassin that's out to get her. <clears throat> Him. Get them. <coughs> In half an hour, it'll all be over. But I love this dynamic. Again, the, the building out the story with Barbara and Bruce and Terry in the Batcave that she just kind of waltzes right in there because that used to be her workplace, I guess, her headquarters, as it were. And, and that dynamic of Bruce and her just picking up right where they left off and Terry going, what is going on here? Hello, Barbara. Long time, Bruce. How's Sam? Holding up. And we we allude to a history that that is is developed a little bit throughout this episode, but I think there's more to it of what happened that caused Barbara to leave the, a life of fighting crime and follow a more legitimate uh, a path in her father's footsteps of as police commissioner. And, as, and, and and presumably, I mean, that's not just a job that's handed to you, that she had to have worked her way up through the police department to eventually take over as commissioner. That brand of costume justice went out with a Tommy gun, kid. And taking on that path versus how she felt when she was younger and and was all gung-ho about fighting crime and wanting to make a difference and... and do things that way, and and kind of jumped into it herself. It wasn't, Batman didn't really recruit her, or he just kind of brought her in under his wing, which is, <laughs> wing. That's what we all thought at the beginning. So I like those little, little uh, breadcrumbs that are sprinkled throughout this episode, but that dynamic between the three of them in the Batcave is what was just really interesting and it's moments like that in this show that i that i enjoy and i think there's enough of those that again as as a, a fan from the original series that's really attractive to me and it and this show doesn't kind of devolve into oh here's the new batman fighting crime but they they're building into this this bigger story which is which is always the thing that i enjoyed about batman and, and particularly about the animated series that they are are digging into this, but still letting the show stand on its own. It doesn't need the old series, which I, I know I said I wasn't going to compare it to the old series, but it, it, it there, there's but it sort of does it for me. It is interwoven into this one universe, which I really enjoy, and it's it scenes like this that I really particularly dig in this show. I've looked the other way so far, but I'm not my father. You know, and, and, it, and it leads up to Barbara sitting down with, with Terry and kind of telling him a little bit more about uh, her past and what has happened. Dick finally got fed up living in Batman's shadow. And they allude to uh, some of the, the, the subject matter that they dealt with in Old Wounds from uh, the animated series, which you can see my review of that episode up here. And again, I think that there's more that they're they're missing in this, but... It does pose a, a little bit of an issue, and I, and I hope that they kind of flesh this out a little bit more as we go on. But the timeline is a little screwy for me. You know, they, they, they talk freely about Barbara dating Dick Grayson. Puppy love. Later on, we just never talked about it. And they were both in college at the same time, and that makes sense. And then we have Bruce, who... The, Again, it's a little fishy of how much older Bruce is from Dick, 
but he was an adult uh, established as Batman when Dick Grayson was a kid. So then when Dick Grayson is in a, a college kid and Barbara's the same age, well, now Bruce is that much older, you know, and to me, Dick Grayson and Barbara were always like, you know, he was kind of a father figure to them. He was hurt when I chose to stay behind with Bruce. But then they allude to um, Barbara having some sort of romantic involvement with, with Bruce. As his partner. His girlfriend? And, I, and I'm kind of curious when that happened and if that has something to do with why Dick left. And obviously they, they talk about how Dick left Gotham and, and gave up when he knew that Bar and, and was disappointed in Barbara that she was going to stay and pursue this. But then then what happened? She obviously didn't pursue it and she she went a more legitimate line of work and the, presumably a whole... Like I said, there, there had to have been a, a, a swell of time that happened where she was going through police academy and be, joining the police force and working her way up through the ranks to before she became commissioner. So there's a lot of time that has passed where Dick has left and why he never came back into the picture and at what point did she get involved with Bruce Wayne. And I don't know. There's, a, there's some missing pieces in there and the timeline's a little screwy for me. And I don't... It felt odd that they introduced that element in this episode and i don't think it was needed uh as part of the history of of the characters so i'm hoping it's setting up something in the future and if you know what that is don't don't spoil it for me in the comments because i'm interested to see where that goes but maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't go anywhere and it's just left to our imagination time comes when you gotta hang up the cape you know we were talking about in the last episode how they they find these different places to fight in different locales and that but this, uh, the you know, for me, the fighting on top of a train is a little, little wore out, and we've seen it time and time again. And I think it worked in westerns because I don't think trains moved as fast uh, back then. But now, like you know, now we're in the future, and I'm assuming the trains are even that much more faster in these bullet trains and things like that. And there we are, just walking around on top of a train, and and as cool as it is. It's a little, little overdone. I, somebody should do a supercut of, of all the, the, the moments in movies and shows that we see somebody fighting on top of a train. It happens a lot. And, and, and as cool, again, as cool as it is, eh, we can find something different, find a no, new location for a final battle. Do I look worried? But I do like this, this last little moment where we see that um, Kirari has failed at her mission and is now... Uh, being hunted herself and is preoccupied with trying to survive, which is, again, it, it, I mean, that in itself, I feel like could be a whole episode where, and maybe it is, maybe it does come up, where we see Batman protecting a once villain, a once hitman out on them, uh, protecting her from the League of Assassins and, and a turn of the tide, as it were. But, but I love that little final cliffhanger there at the end. She has other concerns now. When it comes time to rank this episode, um, it's fun. It's a good episode, and it certainly is interesting in the sense that it, it gives more story to Barbara Gordon, and we get to see more about her history and her character and things like that. But as far as a Batman episode, I, you know, it, it's it's again, it's him fighting this uh, League of Assassins that's that's hunting them. And a couple of the elements in there that are a little screwy with the timeline that I feel like this episode wasn't as well thought out as some of the other episodes. So for those reasons, it falls at the number nine spot of my favorite episodes so far, just below Meltdown, because... You know, that one uh, as a continuation of the Mr. Freeze story and it all lines up and it all makes sense is is just enough to push this one down below it. But I do have this one beating out Winning Edge. I, I think just because like the whole sports, you know, drug use thing was just not a not a story that I'm necessarily that interested in. So this one had more elements to that and, and it moved the story of Batman and the history of Barbara and Batgirl and all that kind of moved that forward um, that I enjoyed about this episode a little bit more. I guess you never lose the touch. 
So let me know, what do you think about how they develop Barbara Gordon's character? Do you like that she gave up the life of crime and is now the commissioner? Do you like that? Or would you have liked to see her become an older version of Batgirl uh, in, in this world? Or do you have a different idea of what they should have done with Barbara Gordon? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, whether you agree or don't agree with me, just hit that like button. If you want to see more episodes like this and see my opinion on future episodes of Batman Beyond and other shows, hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can even hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time that I have a new episode coming out. Like the next one, which is the last episode of the first season, Ascension. So you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Cano, and I'll see you soon.